Um, so we still have this RLC meter here, and you still see the um, self-built plate capacitor connected there. And so I have some more. Um, I have some more resistors, uh, some more capacitors. This is the yellow one that I've shown before. You, you see it says something like one micro. So if we connect this, we should get one micro. So let's check if this works. And you see, okay, we get one micro. That makes sense. Ma manufacturer does not sold us strange stuff. Um, then we have this electrolytic capacitor that I've shown before. Um, camera does not, unfortunately, does not really focus. Uh, but this one has 22 microfarads. Let me see if I can try to get this into focus, but not really. So 22 microfarads. Let's see if it works and it does not because I think this electrolytic capacitor uh, just works for DC and we would need to apply some, some DC voltage before. So that's why they have also, um, it's, it's a marking like a diet, what is the plus and what is the minus side. Okay, and so then the last capacitor that I have here is a ceramic capacitor. I'm not sure what the capacitance is here, but this is a rather thick and heavy device. I would say this probably would also withstand uh, mains voltage, 223 volts. And you can see this also has just a very small capacitance, some picofarads, 200 something picofarads there. Okay, and... <coughs> Um, then let me make some space on my table here. So what I've also brought So what I've also brought is a nice older multimeter. Uh, you can switch it on and now it's set to measure voltages. And on this side, you can see there's a connector that directly allows to measure capacitance. Um, and there are three ranges up to 20 microfarads, up to 200 nanofarads and 2000 picofarads. So uh, let's go to this range and I have small capacitors like these ones here and they have some marking on them that says 47 something um, and they are from Mexico. <laughs> So let's see what we get here. And this does not look too meaningful because we get something negative. So let's maybe go down with the range. Okay, this looks meaningful. Now we get something. We get uh, 39.8 nanofarad, yeah, not 47. And so if we go into this picofarad range, then we have overload, then it's too much. Um, so in this range, this looks meaningful. We get something like around 40, 39.9, something like this. Okay. Um, so I have another one of those. Let's just check if they all have the same value. Um, so, but this looks pretty similar. And 
I have I have a, a third one and I think they are all from the from the very same batch. So this is also something that has the same range. Okay. So I, I have three of these capacitors and they are all the same. And so now what I have done is uh, before of course I've prepared something. So I have this very same capacitor and I connected them in series as you can see. Um, so it's it's the same capacitor as we had before, something with something like 40 nanofarad. And if I connect them in series, what total capacitance should I get? 20, 20 ha half of this. So let's check if I connect this here and uh, measure again, then we get half of it approximately, 18.3. Um, nanofarad, which somehow makes sense. Well, that's exactly what we calculated before, that um, yeah, if you calculate total capacitance of series connections, if you have two equal capacitances, uh, total capacitance will decrease, will be half of it. Okay, so let's disconnect this once again. And so the last thing that I've prepared is and this looks a little bit odd, uh, but it's, you can see it's two capacitors and they are now connected in parallel to each other. Um, and so if I measure the capacitance of these two, what should I get? 80. 80. It should double. So let's check. Um, and then you can see that, that it does not exactly double, but um, yeah, it's not 80, but 78 point something, but, but it still nicely fits to, to what, what we calculated and measured before.